Hey everybody, it's Audrey from Audrey Approved. Welcome back. Today I wanted to do or continue my little nonfiction series where I have a specific topic. So I'm going to talk about nonfiction books that have to do with popular culture. Now I'll caveat this video saying that I didn't give any of these five stars, but I did think that they were all worth reading and I was glad to have read them. So right off the bat, if you have a, a piece of nonfiction that has to do with popular culture that you really, really love and recommend, I would love to know down below so I can add it to my TBR. So first off, I have Butts, A Backstory by Heather Radke, which has a very cheeky cover, if I, if I may say so. Um, very, very attention grabbing, I think. This is a history of the backside, and it's really a historical and cultural and economic and physiological analysis of butts, but in particular, female ones and western ones. Now Radke covers a wide range of topics that have to do with the behind, ranging from women's fashion and women's dress, so she talks about um, pants and jean sizes and why it's so hard sometimes to find um, pants that fit our bodies, to fashion trends like the bustle, which always makes me uh, makes me think of um, the stepsisters in, in Disney Cinderella as, they, as they're walking along. Um, she also covers famous butts, so Kim K and J Lo, but also say um, you know Sarah Bartman in 1800s Europe, who was sexualized and sensationalized and really victimized for the shape of her behind. Um, and then you know a big topic that is kind of pulled throughout the entire piece is just the sexualization of behinds and butts. Um, and in particular, you know, she covers the history, the evolutionary history of why that might be. You know, why are men traditionally attracted to, say, bigger butts? Why would that happen biologically? Um, all the way through to, you know, trends and conversations that, that exist today online. I would say this leans slightly academic, but it's, it's definitely very readable. I'm probably a little bit more used to reading historical nonfiction, so this was a little bit different to what I normally read, and as such, I think at times my, my interest wavered uh, just a little bit. Also, nothing was super surprising, I'd say. I think Radke kept listing off all these things, and I was like, yeah, that's unfair, or yeah, that sucks, or yeah, that's a good point, but none of it, you know, absolutely blew me away, which is not to say that a book needs to do that to get, you know, a really high rating. I just thought that, you know, at times there was slightly a, a little bit of repetition that was done, and I think it would have been really interesting to evaluate the butt in terms of more historical settings and non-Western settings. So I think it's an important subject because, you know, butts are everywhere, we all got one. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe not my favorite read, but if it interests you, then check it out. So the second book I want to talk about is Escape into Meaning, Essays on Superman, Public Benches, and Other Obsessions by Evan Pushak. And Evan Pushak is a YouTuber. He runs a channel called The Nerd Writer. And if you take any recommendation from this, this video, actually, it is to watch the videos from The Nerd Writer channel. Pushak's general style is to take uh, an idea or a concept, whether it be from art or philosophy or just, you know, cultural observations or cultural phenomenons and really break them apart into these really acute conversations and acute discussions and topics. And he does this as a as a video essay, that's what his, his channel really is. They're all anywhere from, I don't know, five to ten minutes. And I, you know, I really enjoy them. I'll put some of my favorite videos down below for y'all to check out. If you're like me and you like that channel, then I think at minimum you'll enjoy this book. This is his debut essay collection. And in particular, I'd recommend listening to this as an audiobook because Pushak narrates it just like he does his video essays. So the catch about long form essays like this, in contrast to like a five to 10 minute video essay, is that the author can get a lot more philosophical in these actual essays. And I think that's not always the best thing. I think Pushak, because he talks about cultural phenomenons like film, sometimes those topics have, you know, they're more powerful when there's both a visual and an auditory element to conveying that information. And so I found this collection a bit of a hit or miss for me. You know, if I already cared about the topic and the cultural phenomenon that he was talking about, then I really enjoyed the essay. So he has one about Lord of the Rings in here. 
I'm a diehard Lord of the Rings fan, so of course I really loved that particular um, essay of his. But, you know, topics that I, I wasn't familiar with or I was less interested in, so he has some on Tarantino films, he has one on um, Yeats the poet, he has one on Superman. These are all subjects that I just don't care as much about, and Pushak was unsuccessful in this essay format to convince me to actually care about them. So again, you know, this is very much a hit or miss for me based on what my interests already were walking into this book. While the majority of these essays have to do with pop culture, he does also include some that are just cultural observations, topics about, you know, public spaces or topics about friendship. And those I did enjoy as well. So I'd say maybe like a third to a half of these I really liked and another half of them were just, I'd say maybe not memorable for me, um, but not bad by any means. I just recommend the video essays over these because you can watch however many you want based on subjects you already care about. And I think they're just a little bit more powerful with that visual element that he can add. That being said, I'll read anything else that Pushak comes out with. I'm a fan of his work, I want to support him, and I'm, you know, eager to see what he comes out with next. And then lastly, we have Pure Invention, How Japan's Pop Culture Conquered the World by Matt Alt. Now, first of all, I don't want to be really negative, but I absolutely hate this cover. <laughs> I think it's just a horrible cover. You could have made this in like PowerPoint by just, you know, moving around different icons, but you know, regardless of what the cover is, this is a really good read and the favorite of the three books that I'm talking about today. In the introduction, Alt himself has a really interesting way to describe all of the pieces of pop culture that he talks about in this book. He calls them fantasy delivery devices, which is just an interesting, interesting term. And he said that they had three characteristics. They were all inescapable, influential, and inessential, which again, I thought was just a really interesting way to, to preface your book, uh, to be like, hey, I'm talking about all this stuff that isn't essential, isn't important, but has still remained, you know, huge cultural phenomenons and things that people love and talk about to this day. So this covers a whole bunch of topics that you might be very familiar with. So Pokemon, Tamagotchis, it covers manga and anime, it covers uh, Pac-Man and the Walkman, the Sony Walkman and how influential that was. It covers um, film, so it covers Hayao Miyazaki and some of the, the older films. I think Astro Boy was, was one of the first topics in here. It covers Game Boys and karaoke and Hello Kitty. And then at the very end, it covers 4chan, which is a very, you know, the, the, the vibe and the topics throughout the entire piece was hovering, you know, pretty positively. And then at the very end of the book, the, the author chooses to go into 4chan and 4chan was, you know, is now, you think of it as, you know, a, a cesspit of, um, of, of bigotry and hate, but initially it was a place to talk about anime. Yeah, I just thought that was a really interesting place to end uh, this book. And if there's one criticism I have, it's just that the ending felt kind of uh, jarring, say, perhaps, to, to delve into, into that subject after a whole book about Pokemon and, and anime. Um, but overall, yeah, this was a really informative read, because not only are you covering all of these things and history of, of different things that you're really familiar with, but also, you know, the author makes sure to talk about the economics and the politics and, the, and what was happening in Japan to make all of these products so popular and ultimately why they became so popular worldwide. If you're familiar and enjoy any of these, these Japanese icons, if you care about Japanese culture and Japanese history, if you care about the role of technology, then you'll probably enjoy this book as well. And yeah, I thought it was a, a really good read and definitely worth, worth checking out. And that's it. Those are three reviews uh, that have to do with pieces of nonfiction that deal with pop culture. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time when we cover a different topic. Bye.